welcome all today i am going to tell you about the serialization and deserialization so first understand what is serialization so uh, in serialization let me take the example i have a file student.java it contains two properties student role number and student name uh, how i can create the object of this file uh, student of this class student s1 equal to new student and then i can set the property like s1 dot student role number equal to 5 and s1 dot student name equal to pradi so now i can assume that this object is actually s1 is i'm presenting with this blue circle this is s1 object now we want to save this s1 object in file or in memory or in database so how we can save it so for saving the object in these First of all, we have to convert into the byte stream. So we have to convert the object into the byte stream and then only I can save it in file, memory or database. So, so the process of creating the object into the byte stream is known as serialization. And once the object is serialized, it converted into the byte stream and then we can save the data in one of these things like uh, file, memory or so this is called serialization. Now, how we can achieve the serialization means how we can convert the object into the byte stream. For that purpose, there is a class which is called object output stream. And this class contains a method that is called write object. Using the write object method, you can actually convert the object into the byte stream. Now, there is one more condition that you cannot serialize any object of any class. If you want to serialize any object of a class, like for example, here student, this class should implement the serializable interface. It means here you have to write the class in such a way public class student implements serializable. When you make this implements, then only you can serialize the object of a student class. Now, Let's understand it practically. So how you can understand practically? For example, you can, uh, I have taken this folder. This is blank. So at runtime, I will create a file here in which I will save the, uh, uh, you can say save the object in the form of byte stream. For that purpose, let me come to this class. I have a class student.java. It contains two properties here. And now you can see I have mentioned here implement serializable. Why I have mentioned here? Because I told you, if you want to make the serialization of a class, means you want to convert the object into the byte stream. In that case, the class should implement the serializable interface. That's why I have implemented. Now, I'm going to show you that how with the help of coding you can achieve it. For this purpose, this is the class in which you can see I have created the student object. Then I have uh, set the property role number and the name here. Uh, here I have taken a variable where I am giving the path of the file which I want to create at runtime. I will create the test data file at test file.txt at runtime and then I will save the object in the form of byte here. So now after giving the file name, I have just opened the file in the output with the help of output stream. Output stream is actually used to, uh, you can say, open the file in write mode. You want to write some data in this file. Okay, so that's why you have used file output stream. After that, you have, uh, you you can say, uh, uh, as I told you, if you want to uh, convert the object into the byte stream, you have to call a function that is called write object. And write object is available in a class that is called object output stream. So I created the object of output stream here by passing the uh, file output stream object here. And then I call the function write object here using object output stream object and I pass the S1. So when this code will run, it will save the object in the form of byte stream in this test file.txt. So let me run it. When I will run it, you will see it is giving a message object save in the file, which is actually the last line of my code. So now go and check here. If you will see test file is created here and now edit it. Okay, you can see object is already saved here. Uh, because the object is saved in the byte form, in the byte stream form, so that you are not able to understand what is written here. Same case happen with the, you can say with the Java code also, that whenever you create any Java file and you compile it, the Java file actually, uh, you can say it creates another file 
dot class file and the code of dot class file is in the byte form that's why you will not able to uh, understand the say uh, the code in the dot class file also okay so we have uh, finally what we have done using our code we have converted the object into the byte stream and that is already saved in the file in the file of test file dot txt so this is one part okay now let me summarize the civilization what is civilization so actually the civilization is that means whenever you, uh, you can say it is a mechanism to convert the state of a object or the object into the byte stream so civilization is a process to convert the object into the byte stream what is the purpose if you want to persist your data in anywhere in the file in the memory or the database so you have to convert into the byte stream and then you can only persist uh, third thing is that for converting the data into the uh, byte stream uh, or you can say for civilization uh, we use a method write object and that is available in the object output stream okay so this is serialization now let me tell you the second thing that is called deserialization what is deserialization first understand it practically so how you can understand practically decide what is deserialization uh, deserialization is actually from the object you have converted into the byte stream now what happens that i want to make the reverse process what is the reverse process from the byte stream which is actually available in my file memory or database i want to convert it into the again into the object and that is called deserialization okay so what is happening you can say how it is possible you can say it means actually your data is available in file memory and database in the form of byte stream now we have to convert the byte stream into the object so the process of converting the byte stream into the object is known as deserialization so now how we can achieve the deserialization for deserialization there is a method which is called read object and which is available in the class that is called object input stream so you can call the method read object of object input stream and you can convert the byte stream again into the object okay so now let's see it practically also so you can see here uh, i have already written a separate code uh, you can say this was the code of civilization now i've written a separate code for the deserialization so here we are doing the reverse thing already we have taken the path of the file because this file contains the object in the byte form then i use the file input stream the purpose of this file input stream to read the file that's why we use the file input stream to read the file then i want to use i want to convert into the again into the object so i'm calling a function read object which is available in the object input stream so that's why i created the object of object input stream and then call this method read object so it will convert it will read the object and convert into the actual object in the memory because we know that this object uh, is converted into the student object only that's why we have used this bracket and this is called type casting so when read object will be created it will convert the read object uh, re, uh, you can say convert the uh, uh it will convert the byte stream into the object and especially in the student type of object so now i stored in a student object reference in my file obj and i am storing it in obj so after that i am reading the data from this object obj student roll number and obj student so if i run this program it will convert here and then i am reading the data from here so you can see let me run it i am going to run it and you can see the uh, data in my console so you can see i'm getting the data fife and pradeep whatever data whatever data I have, I have stored in the process of serialization you can see fife and pradeep that same i'm reading by converting the byte stream from my text txt file from my test file reading the byte stream and converting to the object in my program so this is about the deserialization now let me summarize the deserialization also what is deserialization this realization actually you can say it is the reverse process where the byte stream is used to recreate the actual java object in the memory in short you can say when you convert the byte stream again into the java object this is called deserialization and what you need for that purpose if you want to achieve this you need a function that is called read object and which is available in the object input stream okay so this is you can say all about the serialization and deserialization if you have liked my video you can also click on the like button you can put your valuable comments also there and if you have not subscribed my channel till now you can subscribe it okay for your convenience purpose i will copy the code in the description of this video
Thank you.